In today's video, we're going to explore a little bit more the widget options as well as how can we clone a widget and create our own options for a widget. So let's start it. Basically, when we start talking about widgets, again, we have this table. This table here is where it stores all the widgets from the platform. And it's something that we should know at least, or whenever we have a requirement, which widgets we have available. So we don't have to recreate a widget every time we need something. Most probably there is something out of the box in which we'll fulfill the requirements. Based on those, we can modify the options and then do the changes that we want of the options. Sometimes it's not enough to simply modify the options and that's exactly the point that we need to clone the widget and then do our changes. Then you might ask me why it's so important to reuse widgets and reuse the widget options. It's basically because then you have consistency of the data, of the logic in every page that the widget will be used. In the previous video, I give the example about the icon link. The icon link is exactly those three icons in here in which based on some options that you set up, it will simply display some information for this specific widget. We know that it's very important to know the widgets from the platform. Of course, we don't know everything, but whenever we start implementing something, we should look for a name, a meaningful name, whenever we want to implement. Sometimes you have a, a starting point and then you can start from this and develop yourself. So basically, let's say I want to develop a list. I have some simple list widget in here. I want some data table. We have the data table, data table from URL definition and those here, which might be very helpful for us. And then we just need to adjust the widget options. Now let's bind the knowledge together. Let's say we want to build a new widget and we want to create new options for this widget. Let's start it from the scratch. So whenever we want to create a new widget, we can go either by creating new here or we can simply go through the SP config. And then here you can select widget editor. In here, you can create a new widget, for example, or you can start also from the hello world example, and let's create a new widget from the scratch. I want to say that this widget here is my test number one, and I want to create a page here for me so that we can test this. So since we are talking about widget options, this is our widget, which is completely empty. And we can click on this hamburger menu here and we have the possibility to edit the option schema. In here is where we are going to create the options of the widget. Let's say we want to have two fields, the title and the short description. Let's say title is going to be type string. It's going to have no default value and it will be here is where it is going to be displayed. If it's data behavior is some kind of categorization that you can do for your widget. And you can also create a new one and let's put it short description and the short description, the name, the syntax of the, the field name will be automatically filled out. And we can also do, I'm going to put here data and this here, I'm going to put presentation just to show you that this is some kind of categorization. And as I mentioned, we have two different ways that we can capture the options that are set up on the widget instance and to show to the end user. The first one will be to take the information from the server. We can simply take, for example, we can create a variable with the name data.title and just take options.title, for example, because title is the name that we have added in here is the syntax name. The same we'll do for the short description. That's the first way. With that, we simply need to, let's say we want a title and we want that this title here will show like this. Let's save. Now that we have this saved, we can go to the page that we have just created.
and our widget is here, but it's hidden. So how can you find the widget right now? If you control right click here everywhere, we won't be able to find this because the widget is somehow hidden and you need to click on the widget to edit the options. Then how can we find the widget in here and how can we edit the options for this widget? Well, the answer is very simple. You should simply type something dummy on the page that is not dependent on the variables that you have set up and you can simply refresh the page and the widget will be visible. So you can simply control right click and use the instance options again and you can edit, for example, my title and whenever you save, then you have your title saved. The same will apply whenever we do this short description and then we have our short description in here, but it's not going to appear because we haven't manipulated yet the short description. So let's add the short description in here to appear as well. And whenever we refresh, now we got, well, I said that there are two ways so that you can get the options from the widget. One is from the server itself, whenever you do this options, and the second one is whenever you use the client script part that you can use c.options to access the options from the widget itself. For example, you can declare it as um, c. let's name it title and then you can options.title, forgot the c, c.short description and or description. That's the first way. You can also declare here the factory scope in which you can do an access like this, but let's do it in a second. And we can copy this three times so that we can see, for example, how we called it. Now that we call c.title, we can call it like this c dot short description we can call it like this or we can also call it title 2 or short description 2. Whenever you are calling the scope variable here you don't need to call the scope here because we are talking about the same scope but whenever you use the c as a controller variable then you need to call the c and whenever you use this data variable, then you need to call it as data. So here, what we're expecting to see is three times data title, short description, title, and short description. So whenever we refresh this, we see the three times like this. There is also one fourth way that we could bind the data here, which is simply by using, for example, let's make it uh, an H2 that is called ng-bind. With this ng-bind, then we just need to call exactly like, for example, title2, c.title or data.title. For example, if we do it like this, we should now see my title with h2. That is exactly this one here. We can also confirm if we open the inspect of the browser and then we see that this is our bind. There is also another attribute or directive from Angular which is called ngbindHTML and this is very useful sometimes whenever you need to bind some HTML content. So to conclude the video, it's very important to notice that we have seen some ways that we could build generic widgets. Building generic widgets will help us to have the consistency in every page, in every widget, as we have said. It will also help us, for example, whenever we need to make one change, this change will happen in every widget. So that's why you need to think that whenever you're coding, you have to make it as much reusable as possible. Today you are there, but maybe tomorrow you are not anymore and someone needs to take care about the code. But sometimes you don't need the person to go inside the code to make some changes. That's why the widget options are there and they will be very helpful for you and for your team to make the maintenance of this. As a wrap up, we have seen how can we use the widget options, how we can add those widgets to pages, how can we simply create a new widget and expand and create new options for our own widgets. And then this will help us 
to code better and smarter. Thank you.